We have Austin Reed out of Western Kentucky. I love that video, by the way. Like, seriously. For those Caleb Williams fans, take notes. That's how you lose and be upset. You don't sit there and cry <laughs> in your mom's lap. So, yeah, this is a guy that I, I'm telling you, like, I don't think he's getting enough love for what he did. And it's because he's coming from a very small school, obviously, in Western Kentucky, as we said. Here's another guy that's moved around a lot. But he didn't move around a lot because he was chasing the NIL deal. He was moving around a lot because he was moving to better places each time. Um, started his career in 2018 at Southern Illinois. Then goes Big to school. yeah. Then he goes to West Florida, where he played from 19 to 21, including winning a national championship. By the way, there. Um, so he put some champion on that name there. Um, then the last two years played at Western Kentucky. Uh, Austin Reed, six foot two, two hundred and twenty pounds, and I gotta say he looks bigger when you watch him play. He looks like somebody yes. who's like he looks like he's got a little bit of of uh, the hefty lefty in him. Jared Lorenz there, he looks he looks like a little overweight there, but he's got the right size of what you want for according to the, the stats. And, the, and this is all going off the combine, by the way, what he weighed in there. So it's not like you know people are just adding thirty pounds on magically. Um, in 22, four, 14 games, 64.5 completion percentage, 4,746 yards, 40 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and a 148.9 passer efficiency rating. In 23, 12 games, 61 and a half um, completion percentage, 3,340 yards, 41 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and a 138.3. Uh, passer efficiency rating had just a 70.3 pff grade this is a guy who's a volume shooter like he threw the ball so much it's insane and that's part of why his stats are so high but it's also why he had a lot of reps in college and why he's a clean you know player in a lot of respects there but he still has stuff he needs to clean up because of the fact he did go to small schools. Um, as far as the pros and cons for him, strong arm, hits tight windows. This guy's got a highlight reel that's absolutely amazing because he just seems to hit people in stride at the only spot, almost like, and I'm not, obviously there's a difference in doing this in college and doing this in the Super Bowl, so don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say this is the same equivalency, but think of like the Mario Manningham catch in the second Eli Super Bowl. Those are the kind of mm. plays he made on a regular basis. Like that kind of tight fit, only place it could have gone and to be a catch. That's the kind of stuff he did. Um, yeah, he really needed the thread right in there. Yeah. Which is yeah, what he you need him. for the NFL because that's a that's a one of the biggest things yeah. yeah. So he oh, he hits tighter? tight, tight he get older? Ooh, oh yes. So he hits tight windows very well. Um he goes through his progressions well as well. Uh, you can see him go boom, 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 where he's moving. And you can see he's not moving just to look around randomly. He's got specific targets in mind as he's looking through. Um, as far as his cons, he overthinks at times. Sometimes it's just you overthink things and you lose your window to throw the ball. That's a bad thing. Um, he um, uh, has some, oh, you know, what? I'm sorry. Wrong one I'm looking at there. Yeah, what happens when I, his cons is his, his footwork. What happens he when I get off a twelve-hour workday, guys? Yeah, I'm, re, I'm re-giving you Joe Milton's cons. <laughs> yeah, negative well, Nancy over here. Let's uh, yeah, it's me. Let's talk about the negatives with negative Nancy over here. His <laughs> there footwork. You go. There's a lot of yeah. issues over That's there. That's the one I meant. Sometimes, say. sometimes he becomes a lock. Sometimes he doesn't know how to move. And he trips over his own feet. He's got he's the moves also, like Jagger. He's got the moves. No, he like does Jagger. not have the moves like Jagger. Jagger Sometimes he's got the dance moves out of the pocket. Of a 73-year-old <laughs> Mick Jagger. <laughs> Mick Jagger will probably move out of the pocket better than, yeah. than Reed. No disrespect to Mick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he's also yeah. an average athlete. Unlike Mick Jagger, who practices yoga at 73 or 76, how old, how old he is now. Know, he's got great and he's practiced under pressure. Like sometimes, like he just he gets flustered under pressure, overthinks, and doesn't move. Do 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 do. Deer in the headlights. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, it's another guy who is going to be another day three pick. All these guys so far have been day three pick kind of guys. But I think this guy is a little underrated. You know, we've talked about this before when it comes to small school guys. I don't mind a guy from a small school. I really don't. But what I'm going to say is you better be whoop the freaking competition. You better whoop the competition if you're coming from a small school because you're making a big jump going from Western Kentucky to the end of freaking L. Correct. That should be tra- trademark, by the way. I like that. N- NF freaking L. It'd be a nice t-shirt. Mm. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. In two years at Western Kentucky, and, and I can look up his stats via West Florida and Southern Illinois and stuff like that too as well. So they know he didn't play much. But West Florida, he did really well. Um, but we're talking just the Western Kentucky here. In those two years, he did 81 touchdowns in 26 games. That's pretty damn impressive. good. Yeah, like that's pretty damn good. Yeah. Like, think about that ratio. That's like the equivalent of getting, you, you know, like 45 to 50 touchdowns in the in an NFL season. That's the kind of dominance he had. That's good. I'll take that. Yeah. Now, there is one thing we have to look at. He did have a top flight receiver. We talked about Malachi Corley when we talked about our wide receivers, the Yak King. And that's part of what you have to look at as well with this whole thing is how much of Malachi's success is Austin Reed and how much of Austin Reed's success is Malachi Corley. Yes. Yeah, because they're going to be somewhat intertwined. Especially when your receiver is getting the Yak because yeah. we all know that goes to the quarterback's yards. Now, I will say this, though, too. When you say it, though, he can't be the Yak King if someone's not hitting him in stride and giving him the right place to true. Get, the, get the going. And that's why I'm saying and, it's an interesting and, topic. And when you're playing the right plays and you're throwing it to him when you know he's going to be in stride to get an extra 15, 20 yards. Yeah. And that's what so I'm that, saying. That's it's, something it's, like we talked about him overthinking. He may look at him and go, oh, he's going to get five. Maybe he can get 10 over here, extra yards. Yeah. I guess I I, I'm, to the con. I don't think Austin Reed will necessarily develop into a starting quarterback in this league. I think he develops into a decent backup and probably gets a shot at some point to start due to an injury or something. And who knows? He may shock us all. That happens every so often. You don't get it, you know, not everybody is a round one talent. Yeah, I mean his Talking about Wish and Timu again, like he might be like the Wish Timu, like Andy, uh, which Alex Smith. Yeah, I just, like I said, I think he's a guy that not you, flashy, just kind of just played. I think if you got a spot for, like, let's say, a third quarterback on your team that you want to give somebody a chance to sit behind people for a year or two and develop, this is a guy I would do that with. Um, again. 24 years old, though, same as, as Joe Milton, and that's one thing that concerns me. The difference of why I, I don't hurt, hate his age for him as much as I do Joe Milton, though, is because of the fact that Joe Milton is coming from all six years in Michigan and Tennessee, some of the best coach teams out there, whereas Austin's coming from Western Kentucky and West Florida and Southern Illinois. I can't say the coaching was quite as good. No offense to the school's. Like, yeah, wrong. As I'm, like I've said, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's I, I imagine what he would have done in that Tennessee system. I, I would have loved to see that because Tennessee is as offensive friendly a system as they could possibly be. Um, all right. Thanks for listening to Two Giant Goofballs, a New York Giants podcast. We appreciate your support. Thanks so much.